Uh, I'm going to shift it into Q&A. The first question is, how sensitive is the scheme to the VDFs AMAX? And as a consequence, how practical is it today? The, the follow-up comment is, intuitively costless simulation from Genesis still won't be instantaneous or costless, but how slow is slow enough? So in our analysis, we assume that, uh, that the speed of the AMAX, it's, it signifies that variability in the speed of the VDF computation. So we assume that the, all the VDFs have the same speed, but in practice, yeah, the VDFs, different VDFs have different speed and it affects, it degrade, can degrade the security. We didn't, uh, like we can, we can consider that uh, different factor in our analysis and yeah, that will, that will show up uh, as the, the amplification factor of the adversarial tree will be much higher in that case. So uh, right now, as the algorithm is, it's not practical enough to uh, take into consideration this variability in PDF speeds. I wonder uh, how the mentioned multi-leader protocols fare in order fairness context, especially if one uses hash-based partitions of clients requests across leaders. Uh, any insights? So in general, like even if you have a completely leaderless protocol um, or you choose like some unpredictable or random ordering of transactions, um, there's still the potential that the ordering is unfair. So to give like a very um, brief, uh, let's say data point, um, if you are trying to submit a transaction um, to the, the top of the queue, if you just try to flood the network with a lot of transactions and then choose a random ordering from multiple leaders or um, from everyone even, with high probability, this flooded transaction can occur um, earlier in the block, which can break uh, fairness guarantees if that's what you're trying to optimize as an attacker. So even if you have multiple leaders just proposing an ordering and combine them um, very naively, you still don't get any nice fairness properties. Okay, so follow-up question in the same thread. When the number of nodes n increases from five to larger values, how is the latency expected to scale? I'm especially curious because of the use of SNARKs to generate the fair ordering proofs. SNARKs could have large proving times if the underlying circuit increases in complexity. So that's a good point. So we actually did not implement the SNARK. So uh, as far as I'm aware, there's not like a nice library to do any graph-based computation using SNARKs. Um, and it is like a fairly intense graph computation. So what we do instead is um, just send all of the um, orderings from all of the nodes to everyone in kind of an N squared way, similar to uh, like basically the leader uh, submits that, not an N squared way, but in a um, N times T way, um, where T is the number of transactions. So it, it, it kind of similar to how hot stuff instead of, um, sending like aggregated signatures, it concatenates the signatures together and sends them. Um, so basically we compare it to like the N squared version of hot stuff rather than the N version of hot stuff. And these are the uh, numbers that we got for five uh, nodes and they should pretty similarly scale with hot stuff for more nodes as well. Um, if and when we have much nicer general purpose snarks for doing the kind of computation that we want, um, we can take a look at like how more efficient that can be. How hard would it be to extend Wendy to non PBFD protocols to reduce communication and validation overhead? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on the protocol. Um, sort of our sort of scheme kind of relies on like those two observations we made that there's sort of some common information that we can use and sort of what we're trying to encode is not too far. Um, it's sort of a bounded value. Uh, but I can imagine, I guess, depending on the protocol, if there's some sort of common information that's you know easy to encode that um, uh, we could use the no commit proofs. What is the cost for the leader to generate a no commit proof? Yeah, so basically the leader has to you know it, it receives like n minus f um, you know, two f plus one of these signatures. It has to verify um, you know verify these signatures and then aggregate them together. Um, so I guess. The cost for the leader, um, you know, is you have to verify these, like, um, you know, these end multi signatures, these end signatures, and then aggregate them together before sending it. Is there a way to reduce the aggregation cost for the leader who will inevitably be the bottleneck? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, we've, there are some of the other papers that, you know, we're talking about today. I mean, um, you, there's multiple different types of collectors you could use, there's tree based approaches. Um, 
So yeah, I think each one has like different trade-offs versus, um, you know, having a single leader, you know, collect and aggregate versus, you know, having multiple nodes do it. Super tiny question, but why was n equals to five uh, in tennis? Is it four plus one or three? Yeah, it, it is the same complexity as uh, I could have four plus one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what you need for like this to do. Okay. Yeah, there and, is like uh, I, I I conjecture that you can do three f plus one, but uh, it, it was kind of like using the strong fairness property that we have. Yeah, no, I've seen a similar paper, not related to fairness, but to skipping timestamps, and you usually also need four f plus one, so it makes sense. Based on the experiments that I I did on the fast uh, uh, host of protocols that we were um, uh, implementing. Um, I, I found out that uh, in the BLS signatures, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's faster to aggregate the signatures. So the cost of the verification and the nodes are, are high, but the cost of aggregation is, is, is quite fast. Uh, uh, so uh, then what we did is we improved, um, reduced the verification cost at the uh, receiver's end. Uh, so instead of uh, during the view chain, instead of each node verifying n number of um, uh, QCs or n number of aggregated signatures, they just just have to verify two aggregated signatures. And you you uh, you don't have to use this with BLS. You can do it uh, with any other signature scheme. But the cost of verification will be linear. But the problem will be the message complexity. So you cannot reduce the message complexity. Uh, and I guess that's, um, um, but what we observe is that during view chain, the most of the uh, uh, cost that we anchor is due to the verification of the messages rather than the sending of message because the quadratic cost of message during view chain is just below 2% of the overall uh, proposal block proposal that you send in case of blockchain. So until you have thousands of nodes, um, you should not worry about the message complexity during the weave change. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we should be more worried about the computation complexity. Uh, that's that's what based on the experiments I learned. And uh, and the second. Uh, 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 point that I wanted to mention. I'm not sure if you have take a look at the Hermes BFT of blo for blockchains. They, they are also uh, the using no commit proofs, a, a technique like no commit proof. It's not no commit, but uh, so the, uh, during the weave change, the next primary has to collect some evidence that specific request has not been committed before proposing the next uh, uh, next uh, proposal but uh, they don't use um, encoding that's uh, the way you have it. yeah so that's uh, comments from and I'm not sure if you have look at that and can point out more details of, of difference of how your work is different to the harmless BFT the no commit proof that they use yeah for sure yeah thanks for thanks for your comments so i guess going to your first point um so yeah i actually agree that um for our experience from our experience um we're kind of didn't really worry much about the aggregation costs as well because um generally that was um you know it was cheaper for us compared to verification um but i guess to your point here is is kind of like if you try to use like an aggregate signature scheme naively just by, you know, aggregating, I guess, like the QCs all together. So that that total like um, aggregated signature for us, I guess the experiment I was showing is like much slower to verify because you have to do these um, like linear number of pairing operations, which are generally the bottleneck compared to just verifying, you know, it's still, you know, just one signature here, but the actual like verification cost of, you know, two pairings um, was uh, much cheaper. And I guess, yeah, we're, we were really focused, uh, you know, on, you know, sort of the hot stuff definition of linearity. So we really wanted to, you know, um, yeah, not, not send quadratic number of messages there. 
And then I guess your second point about um, the other BFT protocol, like Hermes, I think is what you said. Um, so I haven't looked at it personally, but I'd say, I guess the really, I think the um, main difference, I guess, uh, that, I, that I envision here is really the aggregate signature scheme itself, um, you know, like having this very special aggregate signature scheme, which uh, is specifically built for the consensus protocol itself and, you know, has different notions of like unforgeability as, you know, where I'd probably say the big differences, but I'd have to, you know, you know, look at the paper more in depth. Vincent, a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first, how portable is your formal verification method to other BFT protocols? And then just a, a couple um, questions later was just how practical are liveness verifications? So yeah, for the Marco's point about the, the, the portability of this approach, it's true that it, we cannot apply it to all the Byzantine consensus algorithm, unfortunately. Uh, part of the reason is that as far as I know, the model checker that we're using requires um, binary inputs, which means that you can only apply it to binary consensus algorithms. So you need a reduction of your multi-value consensus algorithm to a binary one that you can then model check. So this is the first limitation. Um, another limitation is that uh, we, uh, we make some assumption in order to show the liveness, and this only applies to partially synchronous algorithm. Um, we don't have a solution for other type of algorithm. And the, the sake to answer the, the second um, question, which was related to how liveness is hard, I guess when you have um, a particular situation where you don't assume synchrony, then the interleaving of steps that are taken by all the processes uh, pretty much explode the number of states that you have to explore in order to make sure that each path in the execution will end up terminating, uh, which makes the problem, I guess, a little bit uh, subtle. Um, and that's probably why liveness is, is hard to prove, but for other type of algorithms that are synchronous, perhaps there is a simple, simple way to proceed. Uh, accepting your conclusion that it is now feasible to formally verify blockchain consensus protocols, how hopeful are you that this practice will become widespread in the next year to three years? So, so for this kind of crit critical application, if you really want to have a mass adoption of blockchain system for a crucial application where security matters a lot, I think more and more work will have to be done. And knowing that there are tools uh, as advanced as Byz uh, Byzantine model checker that are useful, that are usable even by non-expert in uh, formal verification, I think it's it opens up a lot of possibilities for uh, for critical applications, yeah. Thank you again to all of our session speakers, and I'm going to pass it on to our uh, host for the next session.